guys, welcome to Visible Jiu Jitsu. We got Rufus again. Baseball bat choke, okay? Continuing our series of chokes. If you want to see some more of those, go click in the, uh, in the corner, go click the link, come back. Baseball bat choke from Neon Belly, usually, or side control, okay? I'm going to start it in side control and we're going to see why because it makes getting my first grip dead easy. We're going to do this. Put your head here, body that way. I'm in side control. Oh, one grip. Pop up to Neon Belly. Two grips. Spin, dive, pull to finish. Let's turn this way. Grip. Neon Belly. Second grip. Spin, dive, pull. Okay? So, if we start from Neon Belly, then we can start with our first grip. Okay? Uh, sorry, if we start from side control, then go to neon belly, we can start with our first grip because the grip we usually take to go to neon belly is a thumb in the back of the collar grip. That's our first hand for the baseball bat choke. If I start here and I have nothing, well then I have to get this grip first and then work the second grip. Now, baseball bat choke is very, very difficult to sit up if this gi has slipped down here and then he's lying down. Okay? If that happens, I'm not doing a baseball bat choke. Okay? I might have to try and bring his lapels back to me. Okay? His gi's all out and nice and loose, much easier to get. Because the baseball bat choke, the tightness in the choke is not now. Not here. It's loose. It's tight when I spin. Okay? I don't need a super tight grip there. It's going to come after. So, when I have side control, I'm going to put a thumb in the back of the gi and that's going to keep him pinned while I pop up to neon belly. Usually I will put my hand on the hip, use my elbow to block his leg and pop straight up to neon belly. Okay, Knee and shin straight across, not at an angle because it makes pushing with his elbow, ah, 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 go back white belt, push with your elbow, yes, it makes that because there's a, there's a a, a turning motion. If my knee is straight across and he tries to push, very difficult. He's just pushing back into my toes on the mat. Okay? So I have my first grip. My second grip goes in palm up, so I have my baseball back grip. Now this is the bit people mistake. I have a looser grip here and when I spin it's going to come tight. So they spin and they stay here and they try and finish here. Okay? If Lucas lifts his head up and puts it in the middle, now both my hands are on the same side of his neck, the choke is gone. Okay? Can you see that on camera? Yeah? So, what I need to do is as I spin, is go forward. Okay? But also, the only way that he can unwind this choke is by bringing his legs back that way. So not only do I go forward, but I put my head by his hips. Now he tries to follow me. He can't follow me because I blocked his hip movement with a pillar, my head. Okay? I don't try and put my head on him. Then I have to use force to try and stop his hips moving. If I put a pillar on the ground, it's much easier to resist something trying to move through that pillar as opposed to blocking the hip like this. I block the hip like this. Okay? General little principle there for you for side control. So, set up my first hand, back of the neck, pop, knee on belly, straight across. Second hand comes in, and then I'm gonna spin. Spin, done. Okay? And it's very important that when I pull, like any choke, I lap pull, and my elbows stay close to me. I don't do this or anything like that where I open more space for him. So, let's just turn this way. So my first hand goes in, okay? I pin, pop up to neon belly, second hand goes in, and now I spin and my elbows are gonna cross, okay? And I dive my head to the ground, and then I pull to me, okay? If we do all of that correctly, it should be very difficult for him to follow me. Okay, um, of course we can set this up 
when I'm already in the base, uh, when I'm already in the nail belly, but then the baseball bat choke is just a little bit harder to get. So I've got to get my first grip. We do it from side control. That first grip is generally already there. Then I only have to fight my second hand in. Okay, and it can be a fight. He's being very nice to me, just lying here right now. But if I get my first grip and I pop up in real life, he starts to defend his neck. Yeah, and this can be difficult. All right? Okay. And then I make him have some neon belly. All right? And I start to attack something else. I can start to put my hand, try and defend your neck. I start to put my hand in low and I go underneath his defenses. Okay? When his gi is crossed, you can even put it in under here and go all the way under his gi so that the hand is very difficult to stop. Okay? But always remember, even if he stops this hand, stop this hand, yeah, he defends, he defends. I'm going to start attacking something else. Near side armbar, far side armbar. He's defending, defend, defend, defend. He doesn't worry about the mount. Okay, so by threatening, thank you Lucas, by threatening the baseball bat choke, it's going to give us options to do something else. Okay, so thanks for liking the video. If you do like it, go and like it, go share with all your friends. Leave a comment down below. I like to answer all your comments. If you've seen my previous YouTube videos, I try and answer any questions that you have there. If you want to ask a big question, go to Patreon. You can support us there. You can even get your own videos made for yourself. Okay, so if you have a specific long question, you want me to answer that? Cool. That's the one way you can do it. See you again, guys. Have fun.